On Wizard and the Bruiser, we find all those crazy little moments in geek history that make the things we love into inescapable cultural behemoths. If you love video games, movies, comics, and anime, this is the LPN show for you. But wait, Holden, it's not just educational. Shouldn't we talk about all those crazy boner jokes we make all the time? No, Jake! <laughs> no, we will not! Fair enough! Last Podcast Network presents Wizard and the Bruiser. Find it on your favorite podcast app and hit that little subby dubby button. Ooh, we would love it if you did that. Oh, that would help us out so much. God, wouldn't you love to do that? Don't I sound like the kind of person you want to help? Like, hit the button. <laughs> like, just do it. There's no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. <laughs> That's when the cannibalism started. What was that? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mayhem Arena. Today, it's a beautiful, sunny afternoon in Los Angeles, California, and we are here with the Titans of debauchery, the evil ones themselves, it's fictional and non-fictional villains versus each other in a March Madness style bracket-like competition. Can you even handle the excitement, Marcus? I don't think that today I can really handle any more excitement. I think if I had any more excitement in my bladder, I don't know if I would be able to hold it without wetting myself on live television. And I gotta say, thank you, Pampers adults. Uh, this has been an entire broadcast. Is thank you, thank you, Pampers adults. Dipsy do pooparoo, <laughs> folks. That's right. I'm pooping in my pants right now. I got my depends, and I am ready to shit. You know what I say? <laughs> if I'm gonna shit in my pants, people ask me when. I say it depends. Let's get into the March Madness. Last podcast on the left, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you're listening to. My name is Marcus Parks with Henry Zabrowski, who's Bye. on top of it, doing his best to pretend like he knows what sports are. Hey. And I'm Cock Vitel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good, like, boylesque name. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great name. Uh, I know sport. Yeah. You know football. You you've learned football this year. I got into bit. football. I yeah. like I like watching the basketball and I like uh, some hockey. But we're keeping up a, a tradition here. At last podcast on the left, we thought it was really appropriate as a little stopping place between two large series to give you. Honestly, the, the, we're giving this to you because you ask for it. Yeah, you're always asking for it. This is the third annual decentennial last podcast on the left. March Madness of Murder. Now we're gonna have we have a series of. Of guys, some fictional, some not. We're going to pit them against each other to see who wins. This is a 16-seed bracket. We're going to be starting off with imaginary versus real in each bracket. And then, of course, whoever wins moves on to the next. And we are going to pick the bracket here live on air. All right. Eddie, how are you feeling today? I feel hot, I feel sticky, and I'm ready to get icky, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Our first imaginary villain is the tall man from Phantasm. All right. Ooh. Now, I believe tall man, He might. we might have brought him back, but I'm happy to have him because I love the tall man. I love the Phantasm series. I think it is undersung and overwrought. Yeah, and he does. Don't forget about that crazy little ball. Yeah, no, no, the, the, the crazy ball is a part of it. And yeah. also, he's got incredible strength. Absolutely. And he had, to, what about the little people that he keeps under his coat? His crew. <laughs> yeah, those yeah, are his boys. His crew. Yeah, it's his yeah. boys. Oh, no. Yeah. That, we're definitely including crew in this. Oh, very okay, much good. Good, good, good. And he's going to be going up against, let's see here, which real character? Andrew Cunanan. Oh, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yes, that could be a shape sh- two shapeshifters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's going to be Tall Man and Cunanan in the first round. Next one up is oh, the puppets from Puppet Master. Okay, All now right. we have, for those of you that are unaware, we have the, you got the Drill Man. You got yes. Driller. Yeah, what we have is we have Blade, Jester, Pinhead, Tunneler. Leech Woman, Shredder Khan, we got Genji, and of course, my favorite, Six Shooter. I eh, love eh, 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 eh. I actually I forgot about Leech Woman. Leech Woman's good too. Yeah, Leech Woman's good. Standing wonderful. in at one foot seven inches tall and weighing a full two pounds. <laughs> we are ready to go. I'm interested to see what Shredder Khan does. 
Let's see here. Next up, we have Anton Segur. Okay, now Anton, no country oh. from old from No Country for Old Men. Great villain. Yeah. He's got the thing. Remember, he's got the cattle thing. That yeah, blows people's brains yeah, out. The executioner. The th- yeah, and he flips a coin depending on whether or not he's going to show mercy or not. He makes a decision a little similar to Two Face. Yes, and I will say, I will say, I know we're not getting into the battle now, but that cow cattle prod. Is going to be hard to use against seven crazy little dolls. And and we and, agree. And, I agree. And don't forget, the dolls, also Nazis. Oh and, and, and that gives them, so they're messed up. They might even <laughs> align fuel forces. by hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next matchup is going to be the Joker. Okay, now, I feel like a lot of people are getting Joker fatigue. We talked a little bit about this yesterday with Holden McNeely, unfortunately. and But I will say, if you are going to choose, we haven't had him yet on the bracket. We have not. And I feel like the Joker, of course, you know, he's literally, un- truly unpredictable. Well, that's the thing. The Joker's superpower is his unpredictability field. That's why he can manage to punch Batman in the face. Now, do they do the unpredictability f- the field? Is they, do they do that as just sort of like a... Like a thing to kind of quantify powers for him. Well, yeah, because you had to like people kept on asking like, how is it that the Joker, like, who's just a guy? Because he's a Joker and he's very skinny as well. He doesn't have a lot of muscle. He doesn't work out. Like, how can he be? How can he be a match for the Batman and everybody else over and over again? Unpredictability field. Yeah, and it seems like he can hypnotize. He always has a gang that he like influences, and they they'll do anything for him. You know what that hypnotization is called? It's a living wage. <laughs> in Gotham no, City, not, that's hard to come by. Yeah. It's not Jared Leto Joker. Which no, joke? no, are we no, doing no. Heath? I think we're doing comic book Joker. Com- yeah, yeah, like comic Joker. Book Joker. We're going to do Alan Moore killing joke Joker. Love okay. killing joke Joker. If yes. anything, Mark Hamill, right? Yeah, Mark Hamill Joker Joker is also wonderful. Yes, but still, we're we're going to go Alan Moore killing joke because out of respect for Heath Ledger, I'm not going to desecrate his memory. Okay, by good. including him in this. <laughs> oh. oh. And it's going to be the Joker versus O.J. Simpson. Oh, oh my God. So Jack yes. Seed is back. Yes. O.J. Yeah. Simpson looking for revenge, as always. <laughs> and I think, who knows? Is the Joker the real killer? I mean, Nicole o. Brown Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. I mean, O.J. made it to the final four. Uh, it was O.J. versus Candyman. Candyman came out on top. Yes. So we're going to see how far O.J. gets this time. Also, I want to say O.J., a little bit of a joker himself. Naked gun, wonderful stuff. Oh, you just mean a comedian. <laughs> yeah. Very, funny. very funny guy. Yeah, very, funny very, guy. very, very funny guy. All right. Next up, we have. Very a- sick. <laughs> yeah, he's very sick. Right it's a now. rumor, right? Or is it? Con- or is it confirmed? It's a rumor. Yeah, it's a rumor. It, yeah, it's cancer. a rumor. But I don't know how much longer he's going to be saying hello to Twitter world. I'm just surprised he goes to the doctor. He's going to be <laughs> saying hello to the hell world. <laughs> and he wakes up in hell. Next imaginary character we got. Oh, we're bringing back. This is another top seed, Pumpkinhead. All right, oh. now Pumpkinhead was my favorite. Yeah, I love Pumpkinhead. He's an unstoppable force again for vengeance. But what does that do? Poison the person who wishes for vengeance. So remember that. Pumpkinhead is a really good example of that. Ask Lance Henriksen. And he's like 12 feet tall. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's, yeah he's got the reach. Mm-hmm. He's great. Yeah, he's like coach si- size. Yeah. Right? And then he can go out there and he's, uh, he, he, you know, he's got the gumption. And he's an unstoppable killing machine until his vengeance is completed. Were you referencing Tony Kuko? Yeah, the coach. Yeah, okay. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's nice. I saw the name earlier today because a guy was describing that Ku Coach was saying that before he'd have a game, he'd eat like a full meal, like he'd eat an appetizer, and then he'd have a, a entree and a bunch of pasta, and then he'd have a glass of wine, and then he'd have a full like a tiramisu dessert and an espresso. And the guy was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" He's like, "In Europe, you you take you eat the big meal before the game, you take big shit, and then you play." <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> that is incredible. Pumpkinhead is going to be going up against. Casey Anthony. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Man. Yes. I, think they, I think they might have come up against each other the last, last year. I think that I think it was Casey Anthony and Pumpkinhead in the finals last time. We really need to, and then we're gonna get into this because I ha oh man, I think he killed her the last time. He's gotta kill her again. I don't There's know. There's no yeah. way this is gonna make it through. Pumpkinhead I, I, hates child murderers. Yes. <laughs> we know this. Yeah. And what if George fucking if he went? And he was the one who summoned Pumpkinhead because she was trying to blame the death on him. We'll get into it. Yeah, and she also has the law on her side. <laughs> Which is even worse. Well, she has all of Boca. Yeah. 
All right, so that is the first bracket over on, the, let's say, the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go over to the Western Conference. Coming up first, the Worm from Dune. Now, oh. this was Eddie's edition. This yeah. is not mine. El and that's Shaloub. A it's, it's not El, 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 El Shaloub. Sounds like a Mexican restaurant run by Monk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, he, he is a shy Haloub. El Shaloub. <laughs> <laughs> and the worm from Dune is going to be going up against, let's see here, Bonnie and Clyde. Yo! Oh, my God. <laughs> this is not going to go well for I, them. I, this is the thing. is like You have to walk irregularly in the desert to not capture the attention of Shia Hulu, uh, Bonnie and Clyde. But who's more erratic than Bonnie and Clyde? This yes. is the issue is that I think that that's going to cause a call a lot of worms into They're this. very <laughs> loud. They're very loud. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. So next up, we have on the imaginary side. I've done so much passion in debating this week. <laughs> I feel like Ross Perot. <laughs> no, and speaking of debating, we debated a lot before the show about this particular subject. The birds. The from birds. The birds. Yes. And the debate we had, how many birds? Yes. We eventually, yes. Eddie, <laughs> I wanted 200. Eddie wanted 20,000. Yes. I think 20,000 is a rational number. <laughs> See, I was trying to We're split talking the about how many birds does it take to take over an island? I think 500 <laughs> I think birds was my choice. <laughs> my I number. thought 500 birds was like a good round number. Eventually, we settled on 400. Yes. So, which I'm mad about, by the way. But it's 400. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four, exactly. 400 birds is a lot of fucking birds. It Wait is, a second. But not like for spread out over an island. Well, that's the thing. They're not going to be spread out they over an island. Together. It's a pack of birds. Yeah. Just the gas station scene alone was it's 400 a birds. Pack of birds. <laughs> I think that you're overestimating the amount of birds it would take to take over an island. I do think that 500 birds is close. To, is closer to that number. Yeah. yeah. Side story is L P O T L. If you want to do a little little bit of bird math if you want to tell us how much damage could five actually no let's say how much damage could 20,000 birds do I think oh, that's too much damage yeah that's Where too I much I think that all it would take honestly is a thousand birds I think a thousand birds is like overkill still yeah no a thousand birds way too many see, birds you think this until you see it <laughs> all right remember remember what happened in Raiders of the Lost Ark when yeah. they wanted to do the snake scene you know, Spielberg was like, let me get a thousand snakes. And they look at it like, that's not enough snakes. He's like, get me another 2,000 snakes. And mm -hmm. they check it out. He's like, that's not enough snakes. He's like, okay. all right, give me another 13,000 snakes. I'm looking at this right now. <laughs> you know what's funny is that even though we've just discussed this and we've made our our decisions already, um, we can't go back ever. Um, the world's biggest flock of birds, if you look at this, was 10 million birds. Yeah. And I did look it up. Uh, a flock of sparrows alone is 10,000 birds. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let's, that's, that, that's sparrows. <laughs> that's sparrows. Uh, here's how we're going to compromise. We yeah. haven't even gotten to the fight. We haven't <laughs> yeah. even gotten to the actual Ten debate. Geese took down an airplane. I saw it with my own eyes. Wait, hey, that was Sully's decision okay. to take it to the harbor. He could have taken it around. He could have put it on the fucking runway if he uh, wanted to. All right. So let's say... 400 ravens. 400 ravens? 400 really big birds. But there are a lot of seagulls in the birds. Okay. There yes, are gulls. ravens. 300 ravens, 100 gulls. Oh, God. This didn't have a chance. <laughs> How many <laughs> yeah, can, ravens are in a, a murder? <laughs> But that's a part of, we'll see. We'll see what their verses. But Let's see who they're up against. If 400 ravens were swarming you, you don't have a chance. No. no. I actually think I could make it, but we'll, we'll, that's me. That's my confidence. Yeah, that is your confidence. Let's see who they're verse. Let's see, Let's see who, who they're verses. Let's see who the birds are going up against. Because <laughs> there's one person in particular that the birds are going up against them. There's no chance. Uh, oh, <laughs> Chris Benoit. <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be good. Wow. <laughs> the crossbird crippler. <laughs> Chris Benoit versus oh, a flock man. of birds. Well, well if, if it's a ladder match, they got a chance. Yes. <laughs> we'll have to set those parameters. Yeah, we'll set the parameters once we get to each one. All right. So the next imaginary one. 
Uh, Reagan from The Exorcist, so therefore Satan. Oh, okay, yep. yes. Or not? No, it's not. Well, it's Pazuzu. It's, it's, yeah, it's Pazuzu. 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 Yeah. So I guess Satan would be like the coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the he owns. He's the Robert Kraft. Yeah. If Pazuzu loses, he's gonna have a rough week in hell. Yeah. So let's say Pazuzu. Do you want to say Pazuzu or do you want to say Reagan? It's Reagan slash Pazuzu. Yeah. It's okay. Reagan Pazuzu. in the form. Well, because this is how they fight. Pazuzu's using the body of Reagan, so that's what we have to take into account. Is that we also know that Pazuzu, if the other person is willing, can jump from Reagan into the other person. Because yeah. he wasn't the priest for a little bit, right? But the, yeah. he also did the, come into me! Come into me! Like, yeah. he did that. So maybe we'll, we'll see what we get there. We'll see who they're against. Now, let's see who Reagan slash Pazuzu are against. Killdozer! Yes! <laughs> yes. Oh, man! Dude. Yes! Damn. Yes. Yeah. Now that's gonna that's a bit of an uneven match. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, that's yeah. No, that's well, that's uneven. Yeah, she can scramble Niemeyer. up on the side of it. We don't know. The the entire t- that entire police squad could not break into the kill dozer. Yeah. They tried to kill him. An entire town tried to stop Marvin Hemeyer, and he took over, and he had to stop himself no. like a real American. I've got some theories. <laughs> so the last lineup here that we got. We have, oh, this is a controversial one as well. Mothman. Okay, now Mothman. In the fictional world. The way we put it, this is that, yes, obviously most people view Mothman as non-fictional. I do as well. I think that Mothman is a parapsychological ergogore of many different thought patterns and that that our thought of it actually makes it real, Eddie. So the, but the issue is, is that we needed brackets to fill out. And so my reasoning was like, much like how somehow the fucking bear was a comedy at the Golden Globes. Mothman filled out the paperwork for <laughs> fictional yeah. the fictional league to, in order to get to get himself in there. Bear gets funnier in season two. I'll say that. And the Mothman season. isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. You we'll ask see. Chicago. All right, and the last one that we have over here on this side, we have boom. Lord Rael. Lord Rael. So let me ask you, so everything we didn't pick, they just don't make the, they don't even get to play. Well, I kind of fucked things up a little bit because I thought that we needed like, I was like, okay, we need like 16, but it's like 16 each. All right, so it's like eight. It's sixteen total. Oh, eight each. Oh, so we're not gonna have our Reagan versus Reagan matchup? <laughs> yeah, because we had Ronald Reagan on the other list. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to take out any of these? That's the thing is that we can. You know what we can do is that we can go through these. Because Casey Anthony, we've already done. Ooh. Yeah. I think Casey Anthony, we've already done. I think we could try to replace what if Casey we Anthony. We each get one pull, and then one, and we get to replace one of our choosing with whatever you pull. Yeah. All right. I like this. So these are all fictional. These are all real. These we'll are the do, real. We'll do real and fictional. Got okay, it. great. I like this. This is going to be fun. All right. I would like to replace. Do Okay. Casey Anthony, I would like to replace with Gypsy Rose Blanchard. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's, now that's Gypsy Rose versus Pumpkinhead. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Even better. Even better. <laughs> all right. Okay. I have pulled out of the real... <laughs> oh yes, definitely got a change here. Um, a real, or we got Robert the doll. I pulled. Yes, a local celebrity. We love Robert. Um, can I look at the bracket for two yeah, seconds? Go ahead. Yeah. Um. All right. So Robert, we're going. Robert's very real. Um. And so I am gonna replace Robert the doll with Bonnie and Clyde. Ah. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. All right. So it's shy. <laughs> First, Robert, the doll. Robert the doll. Robert the doll can kill from the inside. Uh, and what if? And what if? What if he was able to talk to? Hell? It will destroy. <laughs> it will literally be destroyed by the fires within Shai Halud that create the spice that make Arrakis the uh, special place that it is. Not the soul. Because I, I, I had a damn good argument for Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, I I'm re- sorry. I had a real good argument. Well, for what them. is it? Well, the the thing is that I think about this is that they are so erratic that they would accidentally do the steps and when it actually, but then when they actually get the boom, boom, boom to come, because eventually they're going to start shooting off guns because they have to shoot off guns. Yeah, and Shai Halud is brought by noise. Noise and loud noises. And I think that if anybody on this list could figure out how to ride the worm, it's Bonnie and Clyde. You, they could end up riding the worm. Yeah, yes. they could. They could end up riding the worm. Yes, yes. and they do. They they could do the desert parkour. Yeah, they really could. They very <laughs> well, much no, could. Well, no, because fucking Bonnie's all jacked up. 
Yeah. All right. I guess she naturally does the desert walking. This yeah, is she exciting. Does. We've never, it's never been done this like never this before. It's never been done. No. no, I've never fucked up like this before. This is great, though. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, okay. So I got on the reel. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Oh, uh, hmm. what'd you get? I got Ronald Reagan, but I got Ronald, but I made sure to say Ronald Reagan, 1978. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not doing 80. We're Senator not doing, Reagan. Yeah. We're do, no, uh, Governor Reagan. Governor, Governor Reagan. Reagan. Yeah, we're Governor. doing Governor Reagan. So I'm going to replace. Oh, let's <laughs> see Because we wanted Ronald Reagan versus Reagan from Exorcist. And if we're, yeah, it's possible. The, the only possible way that we're going to do this, Lord Rael. Well, oh, replacing Lord uh, Rael. Well, I, Good. Yes. I'm going to replace Lord Rael with Ronald Reagan. That's fun because also the reason why we included Lord Rael is a little bit of a tip off of our new series that we're going to be doing is that we are coming back to some of our old topics that we did that I'm very excited for. But Lord Rael is right on the top of the list and he's still fat and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we were just going to kill him immediately anyway yeah. Alright, now do we want to do the same thing with the imaginary? I think it's great yeah. Alright, let's All right. see so You let's... can also pick and choose not to enter them, yes, correct? Yes, if you think yeah. it's better than what we already have, then we don't Like, yeah, I'm not even going to put mine in Yeah I don't really it? care about it, it was Jigsaw Yeah, fuck right. Jigsaw but fuck that, I don't need it Alright, yeah. let's All right. see it Yeah, if I get Godzilla or Jaws, they're in Yes <laughs> Zenu, oh, oh Zenu, so Zenu's yes. got to make it. Yeah, Zenu's well, got to make it. Zenu, what does Zenu replace? Can, I, can, you, can I see it, please? Thank sure. you very much. Um, all right, so Zenu, it could go against. No, I like the tall man too much. Um, the tall man, though, I do believe we've done before. I do believe we've done him before. You have? Yes. Okay, so yeah. All right, I'll take out the tall man. Yeah, tall man for Zenu. All right, yes. yeah, Zenu, we're, we're moving in Zenu. Yes. It's my boy. All right, Zenu's coming in. So. Bringing the hydrogen bombs into play, dog. See here? Mine is, oh, another Z. Xenomorph. I was hoping. Yeah. Xenomorph, Xenomorph from the Xenomorphs. aliens. Xenomorphs. Take it yes. all, the sleeper. Yes. Yeah, that is the sleeper. And I think, oh, okay, here. I think what I'm going to have to do here, I, I think I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to take out the Joker. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna take took, out the Joker. I almost took out the Joker I agree. myself. I agree. I entirely agree. All right. Yeah. Wow. Too much going on there. Xenomorph, much better chance than the Joker of taking it all. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, yeah. I think the Xenomorph's got a hot chance. Fly from your grave. So let's hit that theme one last time. This year's third annual last podcast on the left, March Madness of Murder. Let's check out this bracket here. <sighs> First round, we have Xenu versus Andrew Kunane. Yeah. <laughs> then, Andrew, 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 Andrew. And next, we have the puppets from Puppet Master versus Anton from No Country for Old Men. Ain't no strings holding them down. I'll tell you what, it's going to be difficult to get those tiny little heads to get next to that machine, but we'll figure it out. And this is a long awaited matchup here. Everyone's been dreaming about this one, the Xenomorph from Alien versus O.J. Simpson. Oh. It's the Xenomorph. It's the Morph versus the Juice here today. We can't. We cannot wait for that line. Oh. His juices are going to be loose as they slid open his <laughs> belly with their hind claw. Can you put a glove on a Xenomorph? <laughs> and this is going to be a big matchup here. There's a very much an underdog in this race, but it is a creature of vengeance versus a girl who wants revenge. It's Pumpkinhead versus Gypsy Rose Blanchard. <laughs> Pumpkinhead! 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 <laughs> and on the West Coast bracket, we have uh, the Worm from Dune versus... <laughs> Robert the doll. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my party. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of my hat. <laughs> uh, next up, we have. Oh, now this is going to be a very interesting match. I'm gonna. I'm really gonna look to see what the coach is gonna come up on this one for defense. We have. 400 birds versus Chris Benoit. <laughs> hey, you remind me of my daughter. <laughs> uh, up next, this is also going to be one where tactics are very important. There's going to be a lot of strategy involved this one. We have Reagan slash Pazuzu versus uh, the Killdozer. <laughs> you, Marvin Hemeyer, I believe in you. You're going to say the pledge and you're going to beat the devil. You're going to fucking suck his mother's dick in hell. 
<laughs> and the last one, this is a toss up. Anyone could take this one. It is the Mothman versus Governor Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. They might be friends. <laughs> I, don't don't know. Know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He might be trying to warn us about Ronald Reagan. It all depends on whether Ronald Reagan considers Mothman to be an East Coast elite. Hmm. All right. Well, let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right. First up, let's start at the top bracket. Xenu, the villain of Scientology, the man who took all of the souls in the universe, brought them to Earth, dropped them into a volcano, and turned them into, what is it again? Satan. Satans that attach to our bodies and can only be removed through thousands upon thousands of dollars of auditing by Scientology officers. Ooh. I will say, number one, I'm very sorry to everybody who's not an OT3 who just heard that story and will now die of pneumonia because that is just what happens to you, but that's what it is. Now, have you ever seen a picture of Xenu? No, but I know he's got lasers. He's got hydrogen bombs, my friend. Yes. What? Yeah, so the, the way he destroyed the millions and millions of his subjugated peoples were by giant hydrogen bombs. So we got right, right, immediately up top. So Xenu is versus Andrew Kunan. Now, Andrew Kunan, we love him. Yes. Here, right? We love him. He we is, don't love him. We, he's, he a hates, ho- he's a horrible human he being. He hates fashion. Uh, so much she just wants to destroy fashion. Could Andrew Kananen convince Xenu that he is Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. He is, Andrew Kunanen is very much a chameleon. And Xenu, I'm not sure how well Xenu can tell humans apart from one another. You're saying he's and- racist? <laughs> and Tom Cruise is the current, I mean, godhead of Scientology. And Xenu would not fuck with Tom Cruise. My thing yeah. is, is that as soon as he saw the heights, he's going to know. I think Xenu is aware of TC. I don't think if Xenu's around, if, Z, if, if, if Xenu allows, he's aware of TC. He knows TC. He knows people that are fans of TC because he actually likes them. I think at first, if, if Zenu had met Andrew Kananen, I think that they get along. Yes. yes. Right? I think that they'd like each other. Uh, I think that you could, I could definitely see Andrew Kananen like trying to get like free lunches out of Zenu because I can kind of <laughs> see Zenu being sort of like a gilf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you see some pictures of him, I've seen pictures of him. Some he- he's an alien. Yeah. But some. He kind of looks like Javier Bardem. I would from say Dune. It's more of an Anton LaVey look. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. He's got a he's got an evil goatee. I feel like Xenu is very easily influenced. And I think Kunanen is a great influencer. We have to remember Xenu is the evil guy. He's the Satan of Scientology. Okay. So he's the ultimate deceptor. Xenu is a evil dictator. That was an intergalactic warlord. Okay. Angie Kunanen uh, loved the dance. (laughs) (laughs) And he loved fancy desserts. Yeah. And he got fat on champagne. And we're going con man versus con man. Yes. Then I think, I mean, because you look at Andrew Kunan and yes, he was able to get a lot of free lunches. He got on a couple of cruises. He was able to be a kept boy for a while. Xenu was able to, through his uh, machinations throughout the years, he was able to be a part of one of the most successful cults of all time. Con man after con man after con man. I think Xenu is just a guy named Jeff. <laughs> It yeah. just shows up places, but he just convinces people that he's Eno. But if you can convince people that you've done this in the past and all you really need is one hydrogen bomb, he doesn't need millions. If he has one, I bet you Andrew Kananen tries to fuck Xenu. Xenu says, sure thing. Absolutely. Goes ahead like you'd be like, oh, come see my house. And he's just and he's just like, oh my God, this house is huge. <laughs> and he goes into the house and he sees all like, you know, because Xenu's probably got a big house. I think Xenu's got a lot of it. But I, unfortunately, I don't think, I think they might fuck. But and then after they fuck, Xeno throws him in the volcano with the rest of the, his other subjugated millions and blows him up with a hydrogen bomb. I think that there's no chance that Andrew Kananen can take Xenu, but I just like to try to figure out how it would happen. That's what we did. That's what I we're mean, that's doing it. here. Yeah. That's it. But I, mean, I still feel like Xenu wins. Yeah, I feel like Xenu wins as well. So first matchup between Andrew Kunan and Xenu, Xenu advances. Yes. Kununana. Kununana. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. 
I think that this is unfair. <laughs> I've put $15,000 into my Scientological Technological Training. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up, we have the puppets from Puppet Master okay, versus oh. the man from No Country for Old Men. I my main issue greatest hitman of all time right? yes yeah I put him up there yeah. I love him as a character he's the Terminator basically yeah because what if he gets into he's dealing with all these dolls partially wonder again if it's another one it's like do, would they all just get along like would they all just hang out they're little dolls he might not have patience for toys yeah I can also see he's an unrelenting murderer especially at the end of the movie you may mean not to spoil No Country for Old Men it's a decade old movie yeah. but it's like you know he gets hit and he gets teeth boned and he barely he makes it and like that guy just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes I think the puppets think we got this guy on lockdown. They come into his room at night. One thing they don't understand, Anton Chigurh sleeps with one eye open. Yes. I think that when it comes down to it, he's not even going to use the cattle murdering bolt machine. I think he's just going to stomp on him. I don't think they're even going to get a chance to get close to him. He also has a shotgun with a silencer on it. It's true. But the thing that people always discount on the puppets, numbers. Yeah, that's but one puppet distracts while the other puppets attack. There's all you got seven gotta, puppets, right? All you got to yeah, there's I think there's seven puppets somewhere around there. Uh, you got Blade, you got Jester, you got Pinhead, you got Torch, you got the Leech Woman. The Leech well, Woman is that she's definitely she is an underdog, but I think the one that really is gonna take him down, Six Shooter. Yes, yeah, because then you have somebody from a distance. And yeah. Torch is has a flamethrower. Yeah. But still, at the same time, he could take a look and keep on ticking. Yeah. You know, Anton Chigurh is... Not, it depends on, is he paid to kill the puppets? Because if it's his job, I could see him cutting his losses and getting overwhelmed if it's not his job. Yeah. But well, if he's being paid by Chucky to come knock out the puppet master puppets, true. Right? yeah. Like, who could get if he has Quibono, a dossier on them, yeah. Quibono. If he's got a whole, yeah. If he's got all their weaknesses and he's going for them, because mm -hmm. guess where puppets have to go in their little box at some point, yeah. And then all you guess what you got to do with that box? Set it on fire. But, Throw it in the ocean. But remember this: this is in the arena. Like that. that oh. I mean, like that. This is. I mean, we are going with an actual competition here. So okay. he's, now is he's this not the doing like. Are we thinking Thunderdome? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah a yeah, thunder, yeah. a Thunderdome type thing. Although, on the other hand. Nah, I don't know about that. I, Can I, he get? I like I like kind of a dangerous game thing where you just tell like, "Hey, you got to kill this guy." Hey, you got to kill this guy, and then they meet and wherever they meet. that they show up. Yeah, well, yeah, it's like they have to hunt them down and use whatever wiles they may have. I don't know why I pictured this in a hotel room. I do feel <laughs> this is in a hotel room. Yeah, I feel this is yeah. in a hotel room. Yeah. But does he have guns or not? So he's got the no, shotgun. He's, he's, he's got, got his weapons. He's got his. He's got his weapons. Yeah, yeah. But I would say I mm, think it's Anton Chigurh. Yeah. I think it's Sugar too by a hair. He's gonna get wounded for sure. Oh yeah, he's gonna be jacked the fuck up. Shredder's gonna fucking stab up his legs. Yeah, and but shit. I think he comes out on top. But I think it's one of those he comes out worse for wear. Yeah. All right, two out of three. Anton goes ahead. Now, are we saying that when Anton goes against Zeno, is he injured now? Yes. Well, we, that's what I would say. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Yes, I because it is gonna be if in the in March Madness, if one of your guys falls, you got to play without that guy. Yeah. 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 So yeah, he's gonna. Every person that goes in the next round definitely goes with whatever injuries they may have. Yeah, Zeno's probably still a hundred percent. Yeah, Zeno. No, Zeno. Nothing. He hasn't. No one's touched Zeno. Yeah, because Andrew Cunanan is going at him with his wild. Yeah, and he's penis, also yeah. got empty because Andrew Cunanan sucked his dick the night before. Yeah, so he's even doing better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like yeah, he's he's with it. All right. Next up, we have it's an. This is an interesting one, the Xenomorph versus. O.J. Simpson. I, well, okay. And, and we, there's precedent here. Because we talked a little <laughs> bit of this about last year. About how, because it, this is, we kind of broke the spell here. Because last time, well, no, actually, now this is just twice. Because O.J. Simpson beat the Gremlins. He, that's why he got to be, that's why he made it to the final round. Yeah. So there's precedent of one big man killing many tiny things. But we're only going against one xenomorph here. Like one gigantic. Alien one. Yeah, alien one. Alien one. I think. Hmm. No face huggers. Also, got to say, OJ's a stabber. The fucking blood. Oh, he's got no chance. Acid. Yeah, the yeah, blood's acid. Yeah, yeah he Doesn't gets a chance. It. Oh, okay. OJ, if he's got. Is full Buffalo Bills uniform on with the helmet <laughs> in the Bronco? Like, yeah. is he allowed to have the Bronco? I would say that because those... that's the only way you could remotely equalize himself versus a Xenomorph. Those count as 
accessories. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he has the Bronco, he can live for a while. Because what is the Xenomorph's main, like, weakness? Right? Like, yes, there's total obliteration. Fire. Fire. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, I guess, if he could get the, the Xenomorph in him, if he could bump it around with the car, like, kind of Jurassic Park style... Where he's coming around, he's trying to knock it around. This fight is on Earth, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So okay. maybe, just maybe, he could clip, he could clip it, run it over. Like you could drop the, you could throw the Bronco into the into the alien. It could explode. Maybe, maybe he finds out the alien is the person who actually killed Nicole Brown Simpson. No. <laughs> and then his power of vengeance, he's understanding. He's like, finally, my name can be exonerated. They'll bring me back my trophies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I was seeing, I, I was watching a video recently. It was about like crash test dummies. And they were taking different cars and crashing them in the walls. And the one that faltered the most was the Bronco. Yeah, ah. I don't know if the Bronco is So yet. I think if you hit a Xenomorph with your Bronco, I think the Xenomorph isn't really phased that much. I don't no. think the Xenomorph is phased in any way whatsoever because the Xenomorph is like a bullet sponge. I think yeah. the yeah. I think the Xenomorph beats. I think the Xenomorph I'm, takes Simpson, Jason obviously. Down. pads and everything. Because yeah. that's the thing is that if he's in the Bronco and he's wearing football pads, it's not going to be. <laughs> it's going to be hard to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, Where what? is oh, I can't even go to restaurants anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hard to drive. So yes, the Xenomorph does take it. Over O.J. Simpson. Wow. wow. O.J. fallen earlier than I thought hey, he man, would. Amen. Sometimes Duke goes up against Gonzaga in the first round. That's just how it is. It's hard. It is hard out there. You got to be, huh. I feel bad for him in a way. All right. So next up, we have the creature of vengeance versus the girl who wants vengeance. <laughs> Pumpkinhead <laughs> versus Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Okay. So, all right. Let's imagine that Dee Dee Blanchard, before she died. So, like, like maybe either she set Pumpkinhead against Gypsy Rose Blanchard, right? <laughs> yeah. Or is it the guy that killed her? Yeah. The guy that she worked with, the, the guy from Facebook. I forget his name. The, I think it's Nicholas. Yeah. The guy that actually murdered Dee Dee Blanchard. I'm a little fuzzy on the details because I, I only watched it many, many years ago. I watched the, the documentary many years ago. I mean, this is definitely... A really tough one, but the, I don't think like as much as I want the, yeah, Nicholas Gypsy go to Rose to come out on top. I just don't think that there's much of a chance. Well, this is the thing. Right now, what we're seeing is a phenomenon in the randomness of the bracket is that high powered that we're gonna get to a really big skirmish at the center of the madness here. Yeah, because we're gonna have a lot of high powered entities against each other. Because normally, like we obviously we we respect reality here. And we we really kind of dial in. We were really trying to figure out here exactly who would win. And unfortunately, with Gypsy Rose Blanchard, like, ah, does she have the power of social media? Can she get <laughs> yeah, Pumpkinhead yeah. canceled? Pumpkinhead because don't I give wonder, a shit. He but lives just, for canceled. But maybe that, but uh, yeah, again, or does he fold? Because all of a sudden, now we're going to see Pumpkinhead on Ben Shapiro. But that's the other thing, too, is that Pumpkinhead thrives on belief. Correct? Like, he thrives on other people. I he, actually think... You have to have faith in Pumpkinhead, right? I know. No. You Those have to... Those greaser punks, they didn't really believe in Pumpkinhead. The second yeah, you unleash... It's just... The thing about Pumpkinhead is that you are damned the moment you acquire Pumpkinhead's vengeance. Right. You are damned. And the Pumpkinhead, it's just doing its job. It's just out there. It shows up every day. It's in the rat race. Why did no one... Has no one ever thought of this... Why don't you use Pumpkinhead to kill himself? You think he would? Why don't? Why doesn't Gypsy Rose Blanchard? I think that creates like a time loop. I think it's one of those where it's like if you Doc Brown meets Doc Brown, uh -huh. the universe yeah. falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know if you can so do. You can. But, then that, but this is again that's Pumpkinhead versus Pumpkinhead. Then yeah. this is Pumpkinhead versus Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Yeah, and I think Pumpkinhead rips Gypsy Rose Blanchard in half. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think they arrive and Gypsy Rose Blanchard sitting on me and like you wish you had my husband's dick, <laughs> and then like and then Pumpkinhead is just like yeah they're nodding and then you see Nicholas go to John laughing in his jail cell as he's calling Lance Henriksen on Zoom. They've gotten pumpkin head into yeah. the stadium Pump gypsy row blanchard shows up she's like am i on the ellen degeneres show <laughs> and then he rips her from the limp yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah sticks her in the spokes of a motorcycle yeah yeah, yeah. okay so it's gonna be pumpkin head has to be pumpkin head. yeah and that's the thing is that on that on that we have uh coming up here in a bit this afternoon on nbc 
Xenomorph versus Pumpkinhead. No! And that's going to be one hell of a match. Woo! So we've gone through the Eastern Conference. Let's go through the Western. First up, the Worm versus Robert the Doll. Yeah, Shy Hulud versus a an, a, a an inanimate wooden object <laughs> made that's so fra that's so incredibly fragile. It yeah. is, is Shy Hulud, yeah. A thousand meter underground worm god. Yes. <laughs> Versus cloth. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's my thing about this, though. Shai Halud eats Robert the doll, okay? Mm -hmm. Does Robert the doll's soul then take over Shai Halud? The thing about Shai Halud is that I think that the whole entirely destruction of Robert the doll would sort of negate the curse because Shai Halud is the lord of the desert. He is, um, it's a real creature that has been bestowed upon with mystical powers. Yeah. But what it is, is fucking five buses that can eat. And it has a fire in the center of its belly. But can it get cursed? Yeah. If, even if it wins, even if the, the worm wins, is it now cursed? My thing is that Robert the Doll mostly curses you due to social faux pas. <laughs> <laughs> the Shai Halud arrives and he's not engaged. He's not there to take his picture. He's not making fun of Robert the doll. Certainly clothes. can't call it Robert. It says, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what do we know about destroying haunted objects? It's bad. It's bad when you destroy a haunted object. And so the worm has no choice but to destroy a haunted object. But that's the thing is that if. Robert the Haunted Doll then possesses the worm. It could get cancer. That's the thing. Is that, and then that's the thing is that the what worm. If the worm gets bad luck. I think that's the worm, what I'm saying. I think the worm and Robert cancel each other out. I think it's one of those where the whole thing, the the entire arena explodes. Even though three worms destroyed all of the Harkonnens. Yeah. 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 I think Robert the Haunted Doll can take him down. But that's the thing is that Robert the Haunted Doll is then destroyed and cannot move on to the next round. So I think. We have to dip back into the bucket. Whoa! Whoa. I think we got. I, I think we have just a draw. new fight altogether. We, no, the fight happens. They're both gone. They can't move on. Like wow. imagine if like two basketball teams both died in a plane crash at the same time. Who's it like? That'd be the greatest day CNN ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, they've got to like replay a game to see like who gets replaced. So I think we Let's go redraw. back. Redraw. I think redraw. we redraw. So do we pull a, a real or a fake? Both. Uh, we pull both. We pull both. We, this is going to be a new matchup. Oh, great. yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Let's see a new this right now. Yeah, you do so it. Marcus. Imaginary. We've got unprecedented. Yeah. You're gonna love it. What? Godzilla. Yes. Wow. Yeah. What a replacement. Yeah. I what mean, a it, wow. fucking replacement. It's a big man for a big man, and going up against Godzilla. Wow. We've got squirrel hunting Sam. Here's <laughs> 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 the problem: is that it's hard. It's so hard because, like, obviously. <laughs> It's just I, like Godzilla. Look, I was just like, oh pop, pop, shit! Pop, pop, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like, Go down, go get some. Girl, I'm gonna draw my ass up today. And he's, like, oh, mm. he's like chewing on an acorn. He's like hanging out in the tree, just being like, I wonder what the old holler's gonna provide for those girls at the end of the day. All right, now, oh, now I've never been to a holler called Okinawa before. Oh my god. <laughs> so that is, yeah, we know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. so much fun. Yeah, that's a lot of fun to see. Yeah. <laughs> you never know lot. what can happen here at the March Madness. Yeah, you really don't wow. know. Wow, anything's possible. Yeah, anything is possible here in the March Madness. <laughs> also, shout out to Robert the Doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, and there honestly, go. and I, it's controversial because you know I love the power of Shai Halud, but I, I also believe you know, like, what are you gonna do? What can you do? What can you do? It's gonna get sick. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes right. things, it's all about what goes, in, you have to, what come, goes into your body is what comes out of it. All right. So next up, we have four. <laughs> <laughs> next up, we have 400 birds. Yes. Versus, <laughs> versus Chris Benoit. No. Who, 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 of course, as we know, I mean, he's dead now. Yes. Uh, but he, he, is uh, dead. he did, uh, yeah, from, through CTE, he did murder his entire family. It was quite sad, but he is here in the March Madness I of think murder. He murdered himself with gym equipment. Yeah, he did. Which I get. Vibes. <laughs> no, uh, I... Okay. This might be controversial. 
If you look at the birds, the movie. Yeah. There's a lot of people that were terrorized by these birds. And we all say, yes, oh my God, that's dumb. I do think that 400 birds, despite what Chris Benoit can do, I think if it was 100 birds, Chris Benoit would win. I think he, he could make it. make it through 100 birds. Yeah. But I think 400 birds overwhelms Chris Benoit. I think I don't so, care, too. I don't I care how much. he does really well for a while. Yes. Yeah. And I, then he's yeah. bloody and he's bloody and he's just been like, these girls look like my son or whatever. He's just, and that's the th- But that's the problem. His eyes are going to go real quick. Oh, yes. yeah. Once they pluck out his eyes, yeah. he's over. Yeah. And he's emotional. Yeah. They're oh, not. Yeah, he's so, they are not. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Is, <laughs> ir- he is irrational. Yeah. And after if he, like, think about this. If this happened between him killing his family and killing himself, he kills his whole family. He goes out for a breather. He wonders which machine he's going to use to kill himself. He looks out on the horizon. He sees the huge swarm of birds coming. Yeah. In his own mind, he's just been like, God damn, I gotta kill these fucking birds. Or, like, they infuriate him, or he's down, or maybe, is he, is he, see, here's how I see it. Rage kills his entire family, all right? Walks outside. There's a bunch of birds on this child's jungle gym outside. Oh, yeah, and he's he's just just like, he he looks at those birds, he's like, fuck these fucking birds. He, Instigates the, the fight. fight. He, <laughs> he, the he fight. kills all the birds there. Yeah, and, then yeah, all he of goes, sudden, and so yeah, he's in there smoking a cigar, probably eating a drumstick or something, whatever yeah. you do after you kill your family, right? Yeah. You're just trying to have some because finally <laughs> some peace and quiet. Mm-hmm. And so you're just trying to have that moment for yourself, and you're sitting there, and then yeah, you and attack all these birds him. start looking at him funny. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you know, I honestly I'm just trying to sit. Finally, I have a moment of silence, and these birds are gonna fuck with me today. Yeah. And so yeah, he kills the first batch of birds, rest of the birds. One Send gets away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gets the right. A couple I don't know tweets. How, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no it's called you. X now. <laughs> uh, and the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that Benoit is only, if we're going like classic, you know, everyone's in their classic uniform. Benoit is wearing only underwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It. He's very He's vulnerable to the birds. He's getting up real bad. Yeah. If he had SWAT team gear on, he might be able to last much, much longer. But yeah. he is going to be... Yes, mostly nude. And yeah. if, I like, forget, if it was how... the birds versus RoboCop, like RoboCop's oh, going to take it because yes. RoboCop's armored and there's only a little bit to peck. But Benoit is sitting there; he's wearing literally wearing underwear and boots. Okay, so also, so we're going to give it to the birds. The birds. But I think it. it's willing to note that we just lost a hundred birds. Okay, yeah, so 300 birds. Yeah, now yeah. it's 300 birds. <laughs> Chris Benoit worked his way through 100 of the birds. The other 300 have, yes, yeah, have won. They yeah. have moved on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next now, up- can a wounded Anton Chigurh beat 300 birds? I mean, we're going to find out. <laughs> well, actually, that that is going to be Anton Chigurh versus Zenu. So we're going to oh, come up with that one later. Oh, yeah, this still... one, the one that come, came out of that one, that's 300 birds versus Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> we already know how that's been because the 300 birds get consumed every single time Godzilla farts. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Reagan possessed by Pazuzu versus Killdozer. All right, now Marvin Heemeyer, as you all know, American hero. Sometimes... A uh, reasonable man is driven to do unreasonable things. He piloted his killdozer uh, over a real estate deal that technically he won. Can we? Um, uh, can we have a destroyed his small town? Of what the killdozer is? This killdozer is a completely bulletproof uh, mechanism built on the the skeleton of a bulldozer that he welded wrought iron shielding all around, so it was impervious to any sort of attack. The entire police like squad of his town was versus his killdozer and they couldn't hack in. Yeah. And he had shotgun windows that he was sticking out and like, but he still never killed anybody, but he did do millions of dollars in property damage and then offed himself inside of his own killdozer. So that's what kind of gives him his power. But you got Regan, this little girl that is all fueled by the power of Pazuzu. Mm-hmm. So let's see how this goes. Regan is, she's full Pazuzu. Yeah. Yeah. Floating, jerking off the crucifix. Maybe be minding their own business, tied to a bed, Killdozer breaks down the wall, all of a sudden sets off Reagan Pazuzu. Yes, yeah. But the thing is about that, you got to remember where is Reagan? Washington, D.C. Yes. Like, Killdozer ain't getting up those steps. Yeah, Killdozer ain't getting up those steps. And that's the thing. The moment Killdozer enters. It is, unfortunately, that is his. 
a true kryptonite. Yeah. <laughs> is that flight of stairs. Because that's the thing. <laughs> it's going to be very, very difficult if, to kill those. Yeah, because if he was going to try to get, if he was going to survive through that town, you don't think that the seat of power wasn't going to be next? You Unless, don't think he was going to go? You don't ask. Think about this. So Joe Biden, Grandpa <laughs> Joe, looking for his own October surprise. Yeah. Don't you think him helping Marvin Hemeyer <laughs> Kill the devil himself <laughs> would help him with the evangelical vote. He's got a weak heart. <laughs> He's got a weak heart. But I'm just saying, yeah, but he won't be but, in there. But that's but all but you he has don't to... think if he doesn't use the SEAL Team Six but all the... to help Marvin Hemeyer beat the devil, that that's not going to put him up with the Christian vote. All Biden has to do is clear the way for Kildozer. That's all he has, all to, he has do. to do. All he has to do is say like, "Don't stop this guy." He's going to, and he goes on live TV and says, I'm letting kill, I'm, Killdozer is going to murder the devil today. Yeah. And yes, we might. On live television. Yeah, let me be Biden clear. Let hates me, the devil. He, we, he, he has does. rosary beads in his pocket. Let, yeah. me, let me be clear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes. It may seem, but this is who is in. The, uh, uh, let me be clear. Corn Pop is a best friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> let you say that, Reagan. <laughs> yes, she might look like a little girl. And I might sound and puke and masturbate like a little girl. But once it is murdered, you'll see it is, in fact, the devil. It's hard because that's the, he does have to sell mm -hmm. that the bulldozer has to run over a little girl to kill the devil. That's true. But also, that's his job as president. Is it a little girl anymore? Uh, yes. Yes, it because, is. Because that's the problem. Is the that end, you have to Reagan sacrifice the little girl in order to kill Pazuzu. But if you kill the little girl, again, does Pazuzu become... Is Pazuzu then free... To possess Killdozer. But are we? Do we have another draw? I my no, actually no, because I we were saying this before. It is because um, when he came in to get you to do the when the exorcist came in, he does the like come into me, yeah, come into yeah. so he invites the devil into him, and uh, Marvin Hemeyer will never oh my do God. that. <laughs> Marvin Hemeyer didn't even want people to come but, into his house. But <laughs> imagine if Pazuzu took over. Marvin Hemeyer. Well, then, and then the Pazuzu is behind the wheel of the Killdozer. Yes. Then the Killdozer wins again. Yeah, the yeah. Killdozer. Because it's the Killdozer win. Yeah. Okay, so it's not Martin that's the p person here. It's the Killdozer itself, but it is still technically Martin inside. If it's technically Reagan inside, then it's technically Martin inside. He so kills I think, Reagan. So Pazuzu jumps into Marvin Hemeyer. That means Marvin Hemeyer wins, but he's now the devil in the Killdozer. So now yes. we've got Pazuzu, Killdozer Pazuzu. Yes. yes. So so now oh, yes. that's who goes yeah. on next round. Kill yeah. those or Pazuzu. Oh, that's good. God, I don't want that. I want it to be real. I want it to be fucking real. This would be way better than the last Exorcist movie. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. Live from your grave. All right. And the final matchup in the Western bracket, we have the Mothman versus 1978 Governor Ronald Reagan. Now, one thing the Mothman knows is that there's a problem with the infrastructure in this country. <laughs> And the one major, like, kind of loophole, the problem with the Republicans, right? I actually don't even remember at this time period is that they're weak on infrastructure because they don't like to spend money. So I feel like this is a complete example of, like, the problems that we're facing right now. Yeah. Right? This is actually an, an adroit... And by infrastructure, subtle, you mean the Mothman tried to warn everyone about the bridge, bridge that was going to collapse. Yeah. Yes. And then Ronald Reagan, I think he's doing his best to make every bridge collapse that he can fucking... He can because he doesn't want to spend money. Yeah. One thing I know about Reagan, he can take a bullet. He can't take yeah, a bullet. He can. He can. He can't, he's he's it's hard. He's hard to kill. But, but he didn't fight. He didn't fight in a war, right? Uh, Reagan, I don't know. Probably. I I think he did because I think the every I think it's something like every president of the twentieth century fought in a war except. Um, he, yeah, he trained. Yeah, he trained. Well, I think Ronald Reagan maybe. I think he was. I'm looking at right now. He was Jimmy enlisted. Carter fought in a war. No, he's too nice. He fought in the peanut wars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Ronald Reagan was one of the guys like, I'm an actor and that's going to be what I do. That's you know? what he was. Yeah, yes. he was a, yeah, he was an actor. That... Does he have the chimp? So we can listen in. <laughs> does he have Bonzo? Yeah, does he have Bonzo? Uh, yeah, I think I would consider that. If he's that... got Bonzo, we're talking a whole other fight here. Yeah, because then we're talking about Mothman versus Reagan and a chimp. <laughs> yes. I yeah. actually also wonder if Mothman. Well, what's Mothman's attack? Like what I mean, is he how flies? Does, he's a giant. If are we taking him as? The, and I'm not taking him as a half psychic creature here. This is him as a full-bodied 
cryptid. Yeah, this is, and Mothman is, as we know, he, he's muscled up. He's so it's like it's a fist fight. Yeah, between Ronald Reagan and a chimp. Yes, versus Mothman. Damn. Ah, the chimp. <laughs> <laughs> the chip sets it over the and edge. He's still, and Ronald Reagan, you are, well, here, in I'm 78, looking at this. he's still pretty old. I'm yeah. looking at this right now. All right, so he did avoid, they were trying to call him a draft dodger, so he did go. His problem, truly, it says here's the main problem, was that he was nearsighted. Mm. Mm. I feel like if well, he that splashes him, him with his so red eyes, be and he scared can't of the sight of the Mothman. If Mothman kills the chimp first, Ronald Reagan's fuck. What about Secret Service? Uh, he was governor then. No Secret Service Don't yet. They have, but they got, he's got I mean, protection. He, yeah, he's got like a detail. And we know his detail. They're slacking. <laughs> <laughs> but he also, yeah, I think that, I still think Mothman beats Reagan and the monkey. I think that he's too strong. I Chip. think too physically in these two kids. I yeah. think that if he gets rid of the monkey, then it's fine. But if he, yeah, he, if, like, let's say he goes, if, he feeds into Ronald Reagan's confidence about the American infrastructure. Yeah. <laughs> Mothman knows every single bridge, highway that's got a problem. He knows, like, when traffic lights are out. He knows when, like, he's a civil engineer. He's got, like, you know, like, he knows what's going on. So he takes Ronald Reagan to an area where he knows that, like, maybe there's been a lot of fracking. And Ronald Reagan and the chimp are expecting to be this like fight, but he's telling he that he's just been like, oh, but don't worry, Bongo. This is good. This is some fine American road work we're working on here, you know. And yeah. then they go. <laughs> the Reagan's fucking... impeccable. <laughs> 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 so the Loft man being like, you know, like, leading them out to go to the fight. It takes her across a rickety old bridge, and he knows it's going to collapse. And the bridge collapses, kills Ronald Reagan and the chimp. Or what about the Mothman? Well, the Mothman can fly. Yeah. Yeah, the Mothman can fly. I think with all the, um, you know, because we got to remember Reagan uh, crippled the uh, the mental health community. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You no. know, he took 500,000 beds so and released So 500 them. mentally unbalanced 500, people have, 500, been, have been kicked out of. So if we include <laughs> the <laughs> mentally ill people that were kicked out of the institution system yes. when Ronald Reagan shut it down. Yeah. When did he shut it down? Well, year, when he was president. Yeah, he was president. Yeah, yeah. president. So ah, this, yeah. Is, but this is pre. Yeah, this is pre. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, he was this just before. the president of SAG. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at this but, now. What is he going to do? Have fucking like at the, Bob Hope? At the end of the day, though, I think that uh, Mothman just flies up to Ronald Reagan and strangles him to death. Yeah. Yeah. So what about the chip? <laughs> uh, Moth, I, well, I think that I think that Mothman the can hold can him, rip his wings off. Yeah, right. but he takes it. He grabs Reagan by the neck. He just flies up in the air four feet. Yeah, and yeah, the chimp, chimp can get out of his out of his reach. What if the chimp hates Ronald? Yeah. What if you find out in the very end the chimp is like, honestly, he's full English, just like this. I just want to say, yeah, I'm a talking monkey. First of all, I, I don't want to even get into that. Second of all, I didn't like working for this guy anyway. Mothman's in the trees, isn't he? Usually, like flying through the trees. No, I know he can stand around. Can keep. He going. stands in the field. I can see that champion. Like now, this actually frees me up. I can go take that job at Neverland Ranch. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah, Bonzo actually. Uh, bo bedtime for Bonzo. Bedtime that, for yeah, Bonzo. That was yeah. That was uh, Ronald. Bet Bonzo goes to Bitburg. That was the Ramon song. They had a sequel called Bonzo Goes to College, but there were no original actors. The ones that were originally in the whole thing, Peggy, who also appears, like, I got to see, who is this Peggy person? Hold on. So, are we saying that Bonzo is well-educated? Bonzo I think is Bonzo well -educated. Was, I think Bonzo Bonzo's went more, to college. Yeah, he's got more education than a lot of people in this country. Interesting. I mean, wow. I really this think, is, <laughs> I think there's a chance Bonzo takes out the fucking Mothman. Okay, well, uh, let's, let's say this, though. Um, <clears throat> this is an interesting... Uh, this is an interesting addition. Uh, Bonzo, bedtime for Bonzo, that starred a chimp named Peggy, but unfortunately, in 1951, Peggy died in a fire. <laughs> oh, um, wow. So they had a different chimpanzee for Bonzo Goes to College. Okay. Mm, okay. Yeah. A younger, stronger. Stronger one. I <laughs> fire fire return. Mm. Yeah, fire return. Yeah, it's a different. Mm. Um, I still think Mothman takes it. I think Mothman it. takes it. Yeah, okay. Mothman takes it. And so we have, on the Western bracket, let's go through these lineups. We have Godzilla versus 300 Birds. Killdozer <laughs> Pazuzu versus Mothman. <laughs> so that's going to be... 
by far the most interesting of these lineups. But on the other side, we have an interesting lineup here. We have Xenu versus Anton, no country for old men. Uh, and this one, I think this is going to be the battle that everyone's going to be talking about. I think this is going to be Battle of the Titans. Xenomorph versus Pumpkinhead. Oh. All right, let's get a couple of these. Let's, let's bounce through a couple of these because we already know, right? We kind of know, unfortunately. Elite Eight. We ones. know Godzilla is going to beat these birds. Yeah, Godzilla's taking out the birds. <sighs> I don't know because, again, you got to go for the eyes. I like just think birds, Godzilla, I don't think go Godzilla the needs eyes. eyes. I don't think Godzilla, they, they, <laughs> I don't think I, we <laughs> shoot Godzilla literally with artillery weapons. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, and he continues to live. I think Godzilla's got to, unfortunately, there's no way, there's no, there's no mind Olympics we're going to do that's going to let the birds win Godzilla. Yeah. Okay, fine. All right, Godzilla takes it over 300 birds. Yeah, I think that that's, <laughs> where, that's where we start. Yes. I think that's where we start. Yeah, for okay. sure. That's because Z1. there are a couple of these, because we're going to get into the, some of these that are longer, more drawn out fights. Of course. So, Xenu versus Anton. Who's winning that one? I think it's got to be Xenu. I think it's got to be Xenu. Because again, Zeno we're too. looking at massive firepower here. I think Anton Chigurh is totally fine against a bunch of little dolls. But I think once you're up against the guy that inspired LRH mm. yeah. and then, you know, destroyed billions of people with hydrogen bombs, he has his own volcano. I think it's just difficult. I think that if he was hired to fight, unfortunately, you think of Anton Chigurh was hired to kill Xenu. Scientology would get involved in the litigation side and eventually Anton Chigur would be so drained, his funds would be so drained, he wouldn't even be able to get to the fight. Yeah, well, because, how is he got to get in a spaceship? Yeah, because he's, yeah. well, if he's Xenu came a, down. A DC, he's got to get in a DC-8, a yeah, golden DC-8. Unless he comes, unless Xenu comes down to meet Anton Chigur, but still Anton Chigur is kind of like, you got to buy bullets. Now, he is, still has to buy compression air for the fucking cattle killing. Like, we're thinking about, like, they drink your milkshake. The economics. That's how Scientology, we have to think about the economics. Now, I have a question, though, before we move any further. Now, Battlefield Earth, is John Travolta Xenu? No. No. Okay, because if he was, it's an allegor- I would have given it to Chigur. <laughs> it is an allegorical tale okay. about the... Uh, in leverage. about leverage oh. and the morality of Scientology. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, as much as I want Anton Chigurh to win, I think Xenu really yeah. has this. Yes, I think Xenu takes it. Yeah. So next up, now this is this is a big battle here: Xenomorph versus Pumpkinhead. I'm saying right off the bat, my pick: Xenomorph. Yes. Yeah. My, unfortunately, my, unfor- I really well, want Pumpkinhead to take this, but I don't think there's much of a chance. It's too fast. Yeah. I just don't know Pumpkinhead's how. Pumpkinhead's like slow, and like it takes a while to move. He's got really long arms. But what if Sigourney Weaver? Was the one who unleashed? I guess that's it's adding somebody to the fight. Yeah, yeah. that's adding somebody to the fight. Yeah. That would, and she's Weaver. not in his world. Yeah, she's not in Pumpkinhead's world. No, but I'm saying Pumpkinhead. Now everybody's in this world. Okay, yeah. So I view it as if whoever calls, like who's calling Pumpkinhead to go against the Xenomorphs? Et. Yeah, I mean maybe. Et versus, I mean, woof. Well, we still haven't. That's all a pitch I've been making about. I want to see the warrior class. On the ET planet, yeah, because ET was like? a child, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what's the warrior class like? And they like, can heal. We know that. We know that. But also, I imagine they have a bunch of other weird, crazy powers. Yeah. But I don't know what that is. But again, that's not what the discussion we're having here. No. That's an entire side thing that I'm making up. Yeah. Can't ET fly or levitate? You can do a lot, I guess. I I seem to remember. Well, he he makes the boys the fly. Yeah. The bike. Yeah. He, he makes can, the boys fly. Yeah. So, but he by extension, he can make himself fly. As yeah. Long I as he's like on something. Yeah, because <laughs> he can make a table fly, but he can't make himself fly. <laughs> but can he make a what was it butterfly? Yeah, is that what the? <laughs> is that from the? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think you know, as much as I love Pumpkinhead, I don't think he has a chance against the Xenomorph. I don't personally. think so either. Unfortunately, I it- and I love Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead, I've been championing each one of these. I absolutely, you know, I love. But again, I don't know who's gonna say. What amount of vengeance would allow him to beat a mama xenomorph? Because no, I think yeah. a mama xenomorph is just like it's oh, just, we're without not even machinery. Talking, we're not even talking about a mama xenomorph. This is just your regular. This is Foot alien one. Xenomorph. This is alien one xenomorph. Yeah. I think yeah. that was a baby. No, well, that no, was the full. baby was the thing that popped out of the guy's yeah. chest. Yeah, the face, the face yeah, huggers. The, yeah, that's yeah. Well, there's the face oh. huggers, and then because the, they grow so fast. Yes. Yeah. Imagine fucking alien a xenomorph popping out of Pumpkinhead's chest. Oh. That's fucking sweet. <laughs> that's incredible. Just for that reason alone, he wins. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So xenomorph goes ahead, and so that in the final four on the eastern side, we got Xenu versus Xenomorph X 
versus X. So this is the very end? This no, is the championship? No, 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 we still no, no. have one more. But we actually have three more uh, to go. Okay. Yeah. Actually, four more to go because we're going to have to get to yeah. the final two. So this next one up uh, to see who is in the Western finals. Killdozer Pazuzu versus Mothman. I think that Killdozer Pazuzu. Yeah. yeah, takes it because I you have completely so unpredictable. He has got the power now. He has devil powers. He's moving things around. Yeah, uh, the only thing kill those are a Pontiac. You know, no, nope. yeah. you know that's the, that's usually what you know, Mothman's going against. The closest yeah. thing I would say is is if Killdozer is bogged down by the same infrastructure attack that Mothman does, but now you have Marvin Hemeyer fueled by the power of the devil himself fighting Mothman hand-to-hand -hand combat, I think he still takes it. I think so, too. Because he's powered by Pazuzu that is probably the 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 very uh, kind of silhouette that Pazuzu as an entity is even projected from. Yeah. I don't think that uh, Mothman's going to be able to get inside the Killdozer in the first place. No, I yeah. think that the he's Killdozer... Just gonna, he's a moth. Moths just bump off I think things. it'll just bounce, yeah. and bounce yeah. off the thing. And then all he has to do... If it was the van from Dumb and Dumber, <laughs> yeah. the Moth Man would have a chance. <laughs> but if also if he sets a fire some other place, moths are attracted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He goes to that thing. Like, it depends on how, because Marvin Hemeyer is clever on his own. Yeah, he is. But if he's fueled by Pazuzu, he could really know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. And he could get him over there. He could go, he makes Moth Man go, gets his back turned. He's looking at the fire because he's mesmerized by it. Kill those or clips him. All right. Done. So kill yes. Dozer Pazuzu. Wow. Yes. Pazuzu kind of got the one off on that. He just got to chill. Yeah. Yeah, yes. he really did. But Pazuzu's gonna be working real hard in the Western Conference Finals versus Godzilla. Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's the final four here. Yeah, the final four is Xenu versus Xenomorph. And Godzilla versus Killdozer Pazuzu. Ooh. Damn, very science fiction y. Very science fiction y. Yeah, it's almost all science fiction y except for Killdozer Pazuzu. Pazuzu. Kill <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Xenomorph Xenu. This is a big one. Hand to hand yeah. combat. It's also, you know, if Xenu's big thing, like why one of the reasons I feel like Anton Shakur couldn't fucking go after Xenu was because Xenu was already in space. And how's Anton Shakur going to get in space? Yeah. Xenomorph. Fucking already there. Oh, xenomorph yes. no xenomorph knows how to get there because the xenomorph just a face hugger gets it. You know, it's just it, they just climbs the ladder until they get into space. Yes, yeah. and Xenu is himself a leader and a dictator. But what is his hand to hand fighting experience like? I think probably in his ancient times he probably had to be a pretty strong hand to hand combat fighter in order to instill the respect it would take the rest of his legions. Like a Genghis to, Khan. Yes, just yeah. like Genghis Khan. Genghis. Yeah, yeah. So that he would Jenga be Genghis Khan. Jenga. And it all falls down. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> but I feel like so he might have some prowess. If there was anybody that would have experience fighting something like a xenomorph, it would be Xenu because he has gone from planet to planet destroying and conquering. Thing is, so is a xenomorph. Yeah. Xenomorph yeah. is not an animal. Like, yeah. the xenomorph is thinking, yes, it's more animal-like. It's a killing machine. But it's, it's, an, a, it's the ultimate killing machine. But it's, it's the ultimate society. predator. Yes. Yeah. But it's just also, it's a society. So, like, they have intercommunication. It's not just, like, a dumb beast. It's this thing that also kind of, it has a cunning... Hive mind. So, Xenu, let's say... All right, now he's destroyed two victims. He's destroyed two people with his hydrogen bombs in his volcanoes. Let's just say, honestly, it gets down to it where he does the thing where he's just like, everybody back off. This is time for me to handle the xenomorph myself. Yeah. yeah. Right? And so they're all like... You can't use the bomb because he's they're in space. Yeah. Yes. So we kill himself if he use the bomb. Exactly. And so he comes in and he has his... I see him with a lance. He's been like, I'll tell you what, Xenomorph. There's a lot of people that said that you're tough stuff. But I'll tell you what. You've never met... Big Daddy Venu before, right? And then he comes Saddam in. Saddam Hussein from Hot Shots. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> and so Alien and him, hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's trying to, and he's like, back off! Back off! I'll do it myself. But I still think that the Xenomorph takes Xenu. Absolutely. I think, in I think hand -to -hand we're on the combat. same page here. Yeah, we're yeah. on the same page. Xenomorph goes to the finals. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Wow. And we're going to get sued for this. <laughs> we're going to get sued, but I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. And in the Western Conference Finals, the other half of the Final Four, 
It's Godzilla versus Killdozer Pazuzu. I feel like because Killdozer Pazuzu doesn't stand a chance. We all know. Multiple tanks, battleship. You know, Godzilla throws battleships. But there is the power of the devil involved. Wait, then he I, destroys... Does Godzilla have a soul? No. <laughs> That's another Godzilla qu- that's a whole other question. So he destroys. So Marvin Heemeyer, as Pazuzu knows in his head, I'm Pazuzu. And let's and let us uh, b- let's define our Godzilla here. I think we need to define it for the first time. 1954 Godzilla. Yes. Okay. We're, we're talking original erect Godzilla standing. Yeah. Yes. Er, erect, yeah. erect standing. Yeah. Not like you know the not the agile new- in any way. T Rex arms. Godzilla. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, and he's got he his you know his spines light up and he breathes fire and he walks around and he's uh, amphibious but also yeah he's amphibious so that that's the Godzilla we're dealing with here and he not o- massive 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 you know just like regular Godzilla he still kills breaks buildings apart. yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. he's far larger than the Killdozer but Marvin E. Meyer in his hell in his head as Pazuzu is like well the devil of course the devil wants Godzilla. Because yeah. he's thinking in his head, being like, once I have the power of Godzilla, then finally, finally, I can go blow up the Vatican. Yeah. Right? He's so excited to do it. <laughs> but then the problem is, is that I think what you're saying is the key here. Marvin Heemeyer rolls in on the killdozer straight up at the Godzilla, assuming he'll even kill me and I'm going to jump into the, the Pazuzu. Yeah. I think that that's the problem, is that Pazuzu, like, he rolls in, Godzilla... <laughs> Lights him up, shoots him with the lasers, steps on him, whatever. Yeah, gets yeah. rid of him. Pazuzu pops out like, yes, now it's my time. And then he goes up to Godzilla and there ain't nothing to go into. Yeah. And then he's like, no. <laughs> also, the back birds in we talked about might have pecked out Godzilla's eyes. <laughs> so there's no entry point there's for There's no Pazuzu. entry for Pazuzu. Yeah. Pazuzu. That's true. Yes. That is absolutely true. So, so I think he kills the devil. I think yeah. Godzilla kills the devil. God- wow. wow. Godzilla. This is wild. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, this is what happens every March Madness. Yeah, it's, it's right. You never world, know. The world is thrown into incredible chaos every yes. March. Every March. Yeah, the, the whole world has to re put yeah. everything together. Yeah, and we all we have to spend the entire year rebuilding yeah. for the next March Madness. We're like, oh God, it's already, it's already happening again. It's true, Matt. <laughs> right. Oh my God. So, I mean, honestly, though, shout out to Killdozer. Yeah. You yeah. fucking, you held it Bubble strong. Yeah, 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 really. Like, like, that's like, a, that was yeah. strong as fuck. Yeah, that was That's really what he wished would have happened. Yeah, it was a really strong show on. Uh, and so, I mean, this is, Woo! I mean, these this finals, I mean, we're talking like there's no underdogs here. No. Like, this is kind of the ones that you expected to make it. Like, yeah. these are like, this is like, you know, Michigan with, you know, Chris, was it Chris, what was his name? Chris. Weber? Chris Weber. Yes. Chris Weber. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, this is Fab Five. five. The fa- this is Fab Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, these fuckers are making it. Like, yeah. it is a big one. And Every Christian Leitner Chris, Duke. Hey, that's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. Christian Leitner Duke. Like, this is, this, this, that's the matchup that we have right here. We have Xenomorph versus Godzilla. And I'm thinking, because Godzilla is so massive, is so gigantic, I'm thinking we're going to have to allow... A mama. We're going to have to allow a war, like a full yeah. xenomorph army and a mama versus Godzilla. Yes. I think God, my, this is going to be controversial, I think, to a lot of people. I think army of xenomorphs takes down Godzilla. I, I think it's the only chance of us ever defeating Godzilla. But I, I think feel so like, too. But then, our li- then the world is taken over by xenomorphs. Yes. Yeah, yeah no, no. Well, it's it's a choice. We actually should be... Re- Weirdly, we should be rooting as a human race for Godzilla. Yes, because Godzilla goes to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is true. I mean, Godzilla well, gets done. I mean, well, that is the plot of most Godzilla movies. After the original Godzilla is a new monster comes, and they have to convince Godzilla to kill to help, to help out with them. Because yeah, like remember Ghidra, the three headed monster that took Godzilla and Mothra. So yeah. we've, if we're allowing the Xenomorphs to arrive with multiple people, is Mecha Godzilla not in play? Ooh. Because Mecha Godzilla was made by man. I think we can only I think we can allow in Mothra because in the past God's I don't know if Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla didn't they build Mecha Godzilla to fight Godzilla? I think so. And I know there was this incredible Godzilla comic book that came out a couple of years ago uh, in which they did build Mecha Godzilla to go up against Godzilla. I think they did. But in the movies in, I, in um, Godzilla versus uh, Ghidra. The, yeah. the three ha- the three headed monster, Godzilla and Mothra did work together as a team. So I think if we're gonna allow Godzilla to have a teammate in any time in any point, it's got to be Mothra. And how about Kong? 
that Kong and, Yo, Go- Kong Kong and, and Godzilla there, are yes, natural no. enemies. But not anymore. They're fucking buddy cops in the new movie. <laughs> It's gonna be amazing. But we're not there yet. Yeah, we're yeah. not we're not there yet. Because remember, we're talking 1954 okay. Godzilla. So this is and Godzilla. You know, we'll do. I also don't think Kong's doing much against a bunch of xenomorphs either. Right, next by the way. year we'll bring in even more real life guys. Like maybe next year what we'll do is we'll go small. Ah, it's and this is the big one. This, yeah, this is the big one. Yeah, this is King Ghidorah. That was Godzilla. Oh no, wait, that was the 1991. There's so many Godzilla movies. Yeah, because remember really into like it, I think an army. Yeah, so like, what does he get to have? So I guess it's honestly, if it's an army of xenomorphs with Godzilla and the human and human armed forces across the globe. Yeah, like let's say that's what it is. Okay. If it's a war for the very planet Earth itself, but Godzilla might kill the humans even if they're on Godzilla's side. But yeah. eventually, Godzilla quits and goes home. Yeah, that is true. Godzilla so will wanna, eventually because Godzilla you want to help Godzilla. Godzilla definitely does give up. Like that's the yeah. thing. Godzilla does after a little because he, he he gets gives tired. Up, he gets tired. He goes back to the water. He rests and then he comes back. But that's the thing. By the time he comes back, the xenomorphs will have completely annihilated the the forces of humankind. Unless we use our arsenal. Against the xenomorphs, if we nuke the xenomorphs, or we it nuke will Godzilla. Make- Godzilla stronger. If we nuke Godzilla, he does that thing where he blows up, like in Go- Godzilla minus one. Yeah, Godzilla yeah. could beat the Xenomorph army if you superpower Godzilla. If he got the ray off with good aim and, and take out the mama, because uh-huh. you got to take out the mama, because the mama's the hardest one. Yeah, I think Godzilla has a chance. But I'm st- an army of xenomorphs just seems so unstoppable to me. Yeah, it really, it seems the same. To I me. mean, they've conquered world after world after world. Yeah, yeah. but have they ever had the power of Bill Pullman <laughs> doing a speech <laughs> at the front of everybody? You know, being like, "You guys ready to kill some aliens today?" And everyone's like, "Yeah, yeah!" And then you have the fucking again, Seal Team Six. Oh, still Team Six is going to fucking just get absolutely murdered. I'm just saying they're there. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, remember, like, because remember, I mean, Seal Team Six, I I mean, if you want to do like a side battle, Seal Team Six versus the Space Marines, I think the Space Marines take it. Yeah. No. Or the Space Marines are in the story. Well, Vasquez. So, so what's this final decision, guys? What's this decision? Because I know it's difficult and we've added a lot of factors that were not there to begin with. We have not, but because- I, I'm going to go. I'm gonna go with xenomorphs. Wow. If there was one loses. xenomorph, yeah, Godzilla would kill it. Well, of course, Godzilla would eat it. Yeah, but we got to. I mean, Godzilla is Godzilla. We got to handicap Godzilla. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. Unfortunately, we do have to handicap Godzilla. I think that a an army of Godzillas, if we're not helping, they beat Godzilla. If Mecha Godzilla is with Godzilla, they win. I don't think the xenomorphs can take out Mecha Godzilla. No, I think the guy. I think the xenomorphs can climb. I think the xenomorphs. Well, how long before we get Mecha Godzilla, and do we just have to include Mecha Godzilla next time? I think the xenomorphs would more easily beat uh, Mecha Godzilla because they could just climb up and swarm Mecha Godzilla, and they could rip off whatever All the hatch, protective armor. Yeah, whatever hatch that lets the humans in, and they just go and devour the humans. I think they take down Mecha Godzilla oh, yeah, easier. Oh yeah, they're in space, they're really and shit. good at getting in shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you can't you're right. keep, yeah, you're you can't right. keep a xenomorph out. All Mothra right. would, I think, propose a bit of a challenge for them. So did the xenomorphs win? I think the, the xenomorphs, xenomorphs win. win. Wow! That's hit the music. Weird. Oh my god, wow. xenomorphs taking it with the championship. An absolutely Betty is flying. A stunning <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> I can't believe it. Xenomorphs. Take it off. <laughs> the Xenomorphs, they were one of the favorites in the beginning, and I think that they're going to be taking over the entire planet, and sometime next month, you and your entire family will be wearing a face hugger. That's right. That is the nail in the coffin. <laughs> All I got to say is I welcome our new Xenomorph lords, and may I please serve you in any way possible. Unfortunately, the Xenomorphs have no use for any species besides themselves. Their only goal is to kill, 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 and I think that's going to be the future that we all have to look forward to. Hey, I've got a cavernous butthole ready for your eggs, so come on down to Wimbledon, Massachusetts and meet my beautiful wife and family. Man, imagine all the xenomorphs that would pile on a Godzilla. Oh, Oh, my God. God. We are in for a shit show, but what a fun afternoon it has been, fellas. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh, it's time for a word from our sponsor. (laughs) Ah!
Hi, are you a bunch of birds? <laughs> <laughs> wow, really great, really fun. Yeah, really fun. And, and, and I think we all learned a lot. We really did. We learned so much about birds. <laughs> we learned a lot about birds. <laughs> hey, man, they made it past the first round. They really did. And I did you not know? expect the birds to make it. When you get first suggested the birds, I didn't expect the birds to make it past the first round. This is like when Texas Tech like made it to the end. Like, yeah. everyone was like, we were like, oh my fucking God. Like we met. Anytime Texas Tech makes it past the first round, everyone is really excited. But you know, when they made it to the end, that was really incredible. Well, really so, yeah. good work, guys. <laughs> this is great. Um, next week, we're going to be back with another in-depth series that I think, what I like about this one is that it's a classic that it's going to make you a worse person. Yeah, it really is going to You're going to be a more obnoxious person at the end of, the th of it, which I'm really excited for. I'm, I'm excited for Yeah, that. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> okay. Snakes. <laughs> <laughs> you see them when we're animals against them. All right, go to patreon.com slash slash podcast and left. If you want to see us sweat in this little room, and you can see it, you can join it, you see us live. We got a bunch of other new stuff coming down the pipe. You're going to love it. I got a brand new interview with Devil, the real life superhero. Yeah, that's no, no, incredible. It's inspiring. Inspiring, people are saying, which is very funny. Um, then uh, we got go check out twitch.tv slash LPN TV. Uh, we just did the Tears of a Clown meet special we're gonna have a sandwich off over the summer Eddie. oh yeah summer ham yeah we've decided yeah. and, the, and the rules for that is that we eat each eat sandwiches until one of us have a heart attack <laughs> the first one the goal is the first Sounds one expensive. have a heart attack wins <laughs> oh wins yes yeah. okay <laughs> yes yeah. um and then uh we go into check out lpn deep dives dune i it's on our main feed yeah we it is the new review onto uh the main feed but also go check it out dune 2 is a good it's incredible. And don't forget to follow us on the social media. Sush. Uh, that would be on our TikTok and our Instagram at LP on the left. We're going to be putting a lot of really cool stuff on our Patreon here coming soon. We've been filming a lot of behind the scenes footage uh, this week, and we're going to be putting that on Patreon here very, very soon. We can't wait for y'all to see it and to get a little peek into the lives of the LP and crew and how we run this fucking thing. Yeah. It's been such a cool week at the office, by the way. It we had been. everyone come in from out of town. That's we had awesome. Jake in, Maddie and Michelle, Ken, shout out to all of them for coming out to LA and making the office a fun place. It's so fun. I love being here. I like, and it's nice. It feels like we got new energy and new direction. Yeah. We're having a good time. So hail, sweet Satan. On Hagin. Hail Ripley. Hail oh, Ripley. Yeah, that was yeah. what we yeah. need. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I once saw uh, a live like a, a screening of Aliens and Sigourney Weaver showed up and was just incredible. She is like, also, she is person, a, she must be gorgeous. She is a presence. Like an yes. absolute presence. And when a fucking nerd asked her an alien versus predator question, the withering stare oh, yeah. that she gave him. <laughs> and so, like, did you and feel <laughs> that an AVP, uh, that they felt that there was sort of correct representation of the xenomorph uh, <laughs> exoskeleton? Yeah. And I think her answer was oh. I have absolutely no interest in answering that question. I'm so sorry, Miss Weaver. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Miss Weaver. And it wasn't mean. Like everyone no. agreed with her in the room. Yeah. It was absolutely yeah, she is a a, a, a pre an angelic presence. And she's gonna take over for Richard Attenborough when he dies. You watch, I'm calling it now. Well, Whoa. she already did the planet Earth uh yeah, long that's what time we're ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Bye everybody! Goodbye. Hey. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com.